WITS Radio, Walk in the Spirit Radio on a walkinthespirit.com. Brother Steve Camera with you here. Greetings, blessings, and hope for today and tomorrow be with you and forever in Christ Jesus. Praise God, praise God. We are in Christian thought. And today we are going to talk about the things that God has sanctified. And this one thing that we're discussing is human life. Human life. The book of Genesis tells us that God said, Let us make man in our image as he was discussing our creation in the Godhead. He said, Let us make man in in our image. In the image of God created he them, male and female. So for those of you males who like to have all that control and think just because God made you first that you're the end all, you're the you're the bottom line, you are not. You were your wife and all females that were born were in the image and are in the image of God just as much as you. Yes, the woman came out of the man. That is true. Yes, the man is to be head of the household. He is keenly the most responsible, supremely the most responsible one in his household. But God must be first. Jesus must be first. And if that's not the case, then I'm sorry to say, men, but the woman has the right to say no to you if you are going to break God's commands. Well, that's another lesson altogether now, isn't it? So I digress. Let's get back to the, to the topic at hand. The creation of mankind, the human being is set apart because it is made in the image of God. What does that mean? Does that mean that God has eyes and, and ears and a nose and a mouth and he walks he walks like man walks and he talks like man talks. No, God is a spirit and none can know him, none can see him in his totality save the one man God that is God, that is Christ Jesus. So, a little more difficult to break down the image of God Yes, we as human beings are in God's image, and Christ, the Son of God, is in the image of God. So there is an image that is like us. Now, the Bible doesn't specify, but we can see all the allegory that's in there in the Old Testament of describing even God himself, the hand of God, the heart of God, the eyes of God. And although God is spirit, and doesn't have all the same body parts that we do. Christ, who is the Word, and who was with God, and who is God, and who with all things were made, as described in John chapter 1, the same was at the beginning that it was in the end. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there was nothing that wasn't made through the pre-incarnate Christ. So... Therefore, the image of God, the image of man, you can do the math. But, but more importantly than describe, trying to describe the image of God and the image of man and break it down into parts that we can understand, um, some things are just too great for us to fully comprehend, even with Scripture. We just have to make uh, an, an assumption, an assertion, a Holy Ghost unction that we know it's true that we are in the image of God because the Bible says we're in the image of God. And whatever that comes to mean, on the other side, when we see Christ on the throne, we're still to take it in high regard. Your body does not belong to you, the Bible says. Your body is the temple of God. Isn't that amazing? If When you're a Christian, your body is the temple of God. You've come to realize that God dwells in you, and so you, you should treat your body with respect, your person with respect. You're to love God and love others as you love yourself. So therefore, God desires for us to hold human life 
in high regard. In high regard. It's separate. It's holy. We are a peculiar people, a holy people as Christians. Yes, but all mankind was created by God. Why do you think he takes sin so seriously? God takes sin so seriously because he's such a holy and just God and he sees what his creation is doing with their vessels, with their minds, with their hearts, with their bodies. And the things that corrupt things that mankind was doing led to the flood. Right? Noah's flood. The flood. <laughs> because nobody was doing anything. Everything was evil. Nobody was doing anything good on the earth. So, for us to say that human life isn't important to God, that, that is a, a horrible mistake. A horrible mistake. As well as, let's talk about human life before mm, modern humanity modern contemporary society, American society, uh, deems human life when, when it is formed. Well, human life begins at conception, most Christians would say, right? Others would say, oh no, human life begins once there's a heartbeat in the womb. Others would say, no, 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 human life starts when the baby's moving. When you can determine its fingers and its toes and its eyes and its nose. Now, and others would go so far to the other extreme that they would say human life really isn't human life until it comes out of the mother's womb. I'd be in a lot of trouble if that was the case. I was a C-section. You know? My mom had me cut out of her stomach. So I didn't even come out of the womb. So am I a human life then? Good question, huh? God says I was a human life before I was even formed in the womb. Folks, we're created when God thinks of us. I'm going to say that again, repeat myself. Human life, our life, was created in God before we were born. Psalm 139.15 says, the psalmist tells God, my frame was not hidden from you. My frame, my, my skeleton, my being, when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Whoa, 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 whoa. Psalm 139, 13. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. And Jesus, well, Jesus was born of a woman. But he long existed. He existed from eternity past before he came through his mother's womb. And of course, God has spoken to the prophet and told him, before you were born, I knew you. <laughs> before you were born, I knew you. Before I needed you together in your mother's womb. Okay? So let's not try to argue about pro-choice. I have a choice. It's my body. Now, I'm not a woman, so I'm very careful. I'm very careful to just speak the scriptures. And um, yes, I am the, 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 I'm supposed to have control of my own body, but for scriptural purposes, not for personal preferences and purposes. And God will work out all things for his good for his will to come to pass and for our good in the end. Okay? For our good in the end. And we have to consider what we do with other human lives, including our own. How we regard them. How we regard human babies. What what makes what makes us take a stance against abortion? Now there's women that come up and they say, well, what about rape? And, and, and what about incest? Well, you know, that's actually less than 1% of the women today who get abortions. Most of it's because they just don't want a baby. Or because the baby might might come out with a, uh, a predisposed problem, uh, a physical ailment or a mental ailment. So they're not, no, abort it, abort it. And I think of all the children on my bus that are special. They have special educational physical and mental needs to be met because they are special and I know that they're special to God and I know that God would not want them to be aborted 
and that those children in their lives enrich as well as challenge, yes, their parents and their brothers and sisters, but I know that their parents and their family couldn't imagine life without them. Praise God. And who are we to judge the effectiveness of a human life, the value of a human life in our own minds, in our own thoughts, instead of in God's mind, in God's thoughts? Praise God. There's a woman, Joni, who's on the radio. Uh, her last name escapes me. I'm sorry about that, Joni. Uh, but she has a radio show, Joni and Friends. She is quadriplegic. Can't move. She's in a wheelchair. Can't move any part of her body, but she can talk. And she uses that voice to proclaim and teach God. What if her parents chose to abort her? Or leave her? Or forsake her? I, I, I perish the thought. Human life is of utmost value to God. Jesus said that our life is worth many more animals, many more sparrows, he says. You're, don't, don't worry about yourself. God, God values you. He's going to take care of you. And you say, well, why isn't he taking care of certain people then in other countries that, that are starving and kids are dying and things like that? Look, humans are responsible for what's happening to other humans more, more than God is. God is sovereignly in charge, but he allows us to have this wonderful gift of free choice in his, in his reality, in, his, in the, the world that he's created. And he says, look, we are supposed to subdue the earth. We are supposed to take it over. We're supposed to have control and be connected with God so that we can be connected with nature, so that we can be connected with each other. And we're the ones that sever that tie, and we're the ones that... Up oppose one another and, and battle with one another and we're the ones that oppress people and lord over them and deny them basic human needs. A nation that has leaders that take the food out of the mouths of the families, that's not God's fault. It's ours. It's ours. And we have the responsibility to care for human life. Now, God does intervene. God does do miracles. God has provided salvation for all. God does have an age of accountability for the children. Thank God for their innocence. But, but listen, we need to do everything we can to uphold human life and regard it as sanctified and holy unto God. And until we do, we're going to continue to do all these horrible things to each other and to our own, our own selves and our own bodies. Think of it. Think of it. Praise God. Praise God. We need to connect with humanity and the sanctification of humanity. Only then... When we see God in the eyes of every human being, when we see creation in the eyes of our fellow man, when we see that they were intricately woven by God before they even hit the womb of their mother, before they were even conceived in the bed, only then will we start to really understand how we're supposed to regard one another. That's why Jesus said, love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as yourself. He covered every single sanctified life. God and all of all that he is, all of humanity and ourselves. We're to love. We're to love because God loves us. For God so loved the world. That means all of us in it. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If this God who made us came to save us, then shouldn't we listen to what he has to say about our individual and corporate lives? He regards us and values us so much. We should value each other much, much higher regard. And our own bodies and our own selves. 
You are fearfully, God says, and wonderfully made. And so don't forget that. And don't forget that every human being is fearfully and wonderfully made by God. The sanctity of human life, we're losing it. We're losing it. And people are dying. And children are not even getting the chance to be born because of choices we are making as a society and as a people on the earth. I know Jesus is coming soon because the Bible tells us that soon we're going to do everything that's evil. The world is going to do everything that's evil and call it good. And they're already It's already getting to that point. It's already getting to that point where God's looking for a people and there's not many. That's why God tells us, Jesus says, few will be found going the narrow path to Jesus. Many will be going the wide path to destruction. So the first thing we need to do is value God, right? The sanctity of God and the sanctity of his creation, of all creation, of the earth itself and all things of the earth. And, and more importantly than the earth itself is human life on this earth if God puts the value on us that he's willing to, to crush his son on the cross to put all sin on Jesus and Jesus is willing to die on that cross for us and that's how much he values us and wants to be with us in heaven and forevermore then we need to value human life in the same manner Every vessel we come into contact with is a vessel that God formed. Be it, know it, see it, understand it, regard it, consider it holy. And maybe we'll treat each other and ourselves and God much more righteously, much more holy, much more reverently. Till next time, may the Lord richly bless you. Remember... Get a hold of us on WITS Radio, on our uh, uh, Facebook channel, uh, on our Instagram channel, on our YouTube channel, and on our website, awalkinthespirit.com. God bless you.